Okay, so we are almost done with the basic processing techniques in Lightroom and we're going to start getting into the more advanced stuff. So if you've watched my other tutorial videos up to now, we've gone through basic processing, we've gone through local adjustments, we've gone through spot removal. The last tool that I use all the time that I highly recommend using in your workflow is a preset. So instead of having to fine tune and perfectly adjust each image one at a time, I use presets to get my images close to where I think they're going to want to be. That way when I load the images straight out of camera, I'm already set up for just minor tweaks and adjustments. So I'm going to reset this image really quick. One of the things that I do, and for my images, my starter, what I've created here, when I click it, you notice it does a couple different things. You'll notice that the image had a little bit of a distortion shift. You'll notice that the colors became a lot more vibrant and that we got a lot more detail in our highlights and shadows. I'm just take you through my settings really quick. For my preset, and this little plus symbol here means I have set it to apply on import, which means every time I import a new image, it automatically receives these settings. The reason I do that, we're going to go through the settings and you'll understand why I do that. So I leave the white balance intent alone. Um, whatever I shot straight out of the camera, that's what I want to see. But I bumped up my contrast a little bit and then I dropped my highlights and boosted my shadows. Now, as you can imagine, this doesn't necessarily look good on all the images, but that's not really the point. The reason why I set these three settings is because it helps me get a very quick understanding of the dynamic range capabilities for each image. So even if it starts to look grayed out and not so amazing, that's fine because what I'm looking at is my histogram right here. I have a clear understanding of what my whites are, my blacks, as well as my colors. And if you've gone through my other tutorials, we've talked about how I set all of my camera settings to shoot slightly desaturated and slightly decontrasted to give myself a more complete histogram. So I juice those up in order to get a grasp of what the raw image capabilities actually contain and that gives me an idea of how I want to go about processing. So the last thing I do in this basic panel is I crank the vibrance up to 60. You'll notice it really, really works on your shadow areas, which is why these shadow areas are more blue than anything else. That is all the vibrance. It won't affect these highlighted areas. The rocks will lose a little bit of color, but if you watch it, turn it to zero. The reds and oranges relatively stayed the same. It's these blues and these greens in the shadow areas that really got cranked up. I leave my tonal curl up alone. I leave my hue saturation, split toning, leave all of that alone. I do have settings for my detail because the nature of digital images straight out of camera just isn't sharp enough for what I want. So if we zoom into a three to one ratio, I want to be able to see nice crisp lines in all my pixels, especially on my horizon lines. I don't want anything to be fuzzy. So we turn off this detail pen and you'll watch it goes kind of blurry and it's not great. You can also see here in these flatter areas, there's a decent amount of noise and grain. We don't, we don't want that at all. So that's what I have my detail preset setting for. Through a long series of trial and error, I have found that these settings work well for my cameras and my style of shooting. An amount of sharpening at 70, the radius at 0 0.8, detail at 40, masking at 10. We'll go into the mechanics of how this panel actually works in a later tutorial, but if you want to copy these settings and use them for your own, then you are more than welcome to. I've also included my starter preset as an available download, just check the description in this YouTube video and you should be able to download that and install it for your own version of Lightroom. The last thing that I do is in lens corrections. So under the basic, I enable profile corrections and I remove chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration appears when you have stark 
contrast in the image, specifically between a very intense highlight and a very intense shadow. You'll see it on lightning strikes, you'll see it on chrome, the, you'll see it on those dramatic lighting settings more than anything else, but you'll do, you will see it in portraits, and you'll see it wherever there are lines cutting through in or out of light light spots in the image so profile corrections I enable profile corrections that lets Lightroom or Adobe really read the metadata and understand what camera was used which lenses were used and which profile to use for the lens to correct the amount of distortion that comes as a part of shooting through glass I do not mess with a chromatic aberration beyond what is in the basic lens corrections. I do have it checked and I have both of them set to zero just in case the image has some chromatic aberration that I do actually want to fix. It's already set up to let me do that but I have it set to zero so it doesn't do that automatically. These manual settings I leave all at zero and that's basically it for for my starter. Okay so to create a preset I'm gonna reset this one really quick what we're going to do is we're going to just process the image like normal. I'm going to set my color temperature up to 6000. I'm going to set this up to 10. Really, I'm just giving Lightroom some settings to read so it can apply those later on to other images. I'm just going to try and get a basic look created here in Lightroom for something I think I'm going to like. I'm going to crank this up. Okay, blues are way overdone. We're gonna fix them down here. And purples as well. That was a little bit too much. Fairly happy with the reds though. We can probably take our vibrance down a little bit. So after the hue, saturation, luminance, I'm gonna put my sharpening up to 70. Set this to 0 0.8, 50, 10. Okay pretty happy with that um, and you know let's let's throw a, a vignette on there bring our highlights back in the vignette and you know I took a little bit too much blue out I want a little bit more in that sky okay that's looking pretty good pretty happy with that I'm actually gonna drop my temperature down back a little bit and we're going to put some more red into it. Um. Okay, so to create a preset, and I want to be able to take these process settings and apply them to a new image, we're going to hit this plus button. I'm going to check none for now. So it's going to make me name it, and it's going to make you pick where in Lightroom you want to save it. If you already have a preset folder created, you can select that or create a new folder right here. I'm going to call this Coolob Canyon. Okay, so from here, we're going to pick and choose which settings we actually want Lightroom to remember for the preset. So we're going to click a white balance, basic tone. We did not mess with tonal curve, but we did change our clarity, sharpening, treatment, color, noise reduction, lens corrections, and a vignette. So when I hit create, that preset will appear right here as a new preset in user presets because I did not select a different preset folder. And so now if I click on a new image, I'm going to reset this because it has a preset already applied, and we click our Colob Canyon starter, watch what happens. It remembered all of those settings that we created for the previous image and it applied those settings to this image. Okay, so presets in here, we're good to go. You can apply that to any image you want and you can create any number of presets for any number of image needs. Someone I highly recommend that you check out is Adrian Murray. I've been following him for a long time on 500 Picks, Instagram and Facebook. The guy's a genius. He, he has some incredible images. So this is his website. And under his shop, he has a bunch of different presets and things you can download. His color and focus and the local adjustment brushes are incredibly useful. I use those all the time for my portrait work. 
and he's he's got them for really really affordable prices so for 25 bucks each um, I highly recommend that you download both of those packs of his the the color and focus because you will be amazed at how powerful these presets can be so make sure to download my starter from the description in this YouTube video and also make sure to go give Adrian a look and uh, stop by his website because he's got some great stuff on there that's about it for presets. We will be going over local adjustment presets in another video. That's an entirely different ball game. Just as powerful, but I don't want to bore you with the length of this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. They will be coming shortly. If you have a topic you would like me to cover or a technique that you would like to see in my next YouTube video, make sure to comment and let me know because I do pay attention to those and will be incorporating any suggestions you give me for upcoming videos. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.